So we remember again uh, in this section we we will go more a little bit more detail on uh, cardinality of a set. We remember we says uh, the uh, degree of a set like the number of elements that the set has. It's kind of the same concept here also. The number of the uh, element that consists of a set. And always that word uh, we have in no in trees we use the degree, uh, the term degree of number of notes. That's number of uh, uh, leaves or notes in your tree. And we use the degree of the tree. Uh, here we use the concept the cardinality. So we will talk about what is a cardinality more detail and a countable set and computability so we start with the definition so here we say the cardinality of a set is equal to the cardinality of a set a is equal to the cardinality of set b uh, what we are trying to say here is that if the cardinality of set a is the same as set b it means the two sets are equal and we went through the definition if we said two sets are equal it means they have the same elements if it's a values they have the same values and they have the same number of values and the values are the same so let's say set a have a value three four six set b also have the value three four six then they are the same but if set a have a value three four six and set b have a value three six seven they are not the same even they have the same number of values but since that they have different values they are not the same so that's why we say again the cardinality of a set A is equal to the cardinality of set B. Uh, the number of items and the type of item have to be the same for A and B. Here we say if and only if there is one to one correspondence, that is a bijection. We talk about bijection means uh, and it's, uh, it sounds correct here. For example, uh, if I have one to one, means every element here will generate one at B. And the same thing in B also we generate A. So we talk about bijection, injection. Injection means again, uh, one, a, a, year, a can generate B's element. But some of the B's element will be left alone. Uh, which means is uh, maybe A will have more element than B, or maybe B have more than A. We don't know, but that means they are not the same. So it have to be one to one correspondence, but also uh, bijection. Now here we say that if there is one to one function, remember one to one function we said is an injection. from A to B, then the cardinality of A is less than, uh, that's the term, uh, it's less than or, or the same as cardinality of B. Uh, because it go one direction from A to B, which means if it's going from A to B and we say we have one to one, it means everything in A can have, generate, have a relationship with all the things in B. But maybe there will be something in B that doesn't have no relationship with A. So that's what we mean the function injection. So that means A can be less. That's why B have some terms that didn't activated by B or didn't go with B. Uh, sorry, that didn't go with A. B have some items that didn't go with A because maybe B is too much. So that's why we have this condition here saying that if there's only one-to-one -one relationship, that's from A. That means everything in A generates something in B. But maybe there are something in B that A didn't generate and is there by itself. Then we have what we call the injection. So this means the element in A can be less than the element in B. 
Now here we say that if A is less than or equal to B and A and B have different cardinality, we say that the cardinal cardinality of A is less than the cardinality of B. And we can write it as A is less than B. So if A is the same as B and we said the cardinality is the same, we should have by injection. Every element in A generates every element in B. If we go the other way from B to A, every element in B also corresponds to every element in A. If not, then we may have injection here, which you say from A to B, which means A can be less than B. Possible equal, but mostly to be less. So definition here said the canality, a set that is either finite, which means we can count it, there's n to it, or has the same cardinality as a set of positive integers, is called countable. We can count it. A set that is not countable is called uncountable, and that can be infinity set. So a set of real numbers, R, is an uncountable Y, because the real numbers can be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then here we say when an infinity set is countable, its cardinality is represented by this symbol here, where the symbol is, is a, a left, where again, the symbol here is called a left, and the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So maybe some of you may know this. So we write S as the a left zero because that's the first value or element in the set. Uh, so a left, again, a left zero should be the first element in set, which in this case we represent as a left node. A left, a left node also. Hopefully I'm pronouncing the word very always a left here or a left again. So again, the two things we are talking about here, whether the element in a set can be countable or cannot be countable. When we have values, especially real numbers, we know it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. There can be any value. Infinity means there's no end to the values. So that is uncountable. But if it's finite or finite, uh, then it's countable. We know there's n somewhere. So here they say we should show that a set is countable. So here we say an infinity set is countable if and only if it is possible to list the element of the set in sequence indexed by positive integers. So if we can list the element, of course, there will be end of it. That will be so it's countable. And they say the reason for this is that a one to one correspondence F from the set of positive integer to a set S can be expressed in terms of again sequence, let's say A1 all the way to AN, where the A1 will be F at one, A2 is F at two, all the way to AN is F at N. So this will be countable. Yeah, in our textbook, we have this uh, expression, uh, example of Hebert's Grand Hotel. Uh, when you read it, it tells us that this hotel, there's always uh, an entrance. I mean, there's always, uh, what's the good term to use? Uh, there's a space to, if I'm going to a hotel, there's an empty room. There's, there's always empty room. But this problem is talking about logic. It's talking about logic. So when you read the textbook, or even the explanation here also explains. What they are trying to say is that we have rooms here, let's say one to 10. When a new person come, we're going to move the last 10 out 
then we shift everybody, then the new person will be in room one. And then when the person move, we shift everybody forward, then a new empty room, the new person will come. But in, I think in a real sense, again, you can read this session. This is how the book is trying to explain to us, which means a grand, uh, yeah, let's say a grand hotel has countable infinity number of rooms. Uh, they are using the word infinity number of rooms. The rooms should be infinite. It's 10. But what they mean here is that anytime a guest come, there's always a space. We can always accommodate a new guest at this hotel. How this is possible? That's what they explain here. Because the room of Grand Hotel are countable, we can list them as room one, two, three, and so on. When a new guest arrives, we move the guests in room one to room two. The guests in room two to room three, all the way to the end, N plus one. So this will free the first room, then the new person will come in. Uh, maybe in a real sense, sometimes I may travel to a city for conference and I'm going to the hotel to book a hotel. They will tell me there's no, uh, there's no space in this hotel. You know, look for another hotel. Because all the people who book, maybe that Saturday, nobody is coming out. Everybody will be in. And I should be there Friday and Saturday. So when you read this example again, it, they're trying to tell us the concept of countable and uncountable if, or something infinity or finite. But in essence, we know hotel can be, uh, can be no space, can be full. Uh, whereby if you call for booking, they will even tell you no space this week or less next week. So here yeah, they say we should show that a set is countable. The example given here showed that the set of positive integer E is countable set. So we start at F at X equal to 2X. Yes, we can go all the way. So if it's 1 is 2, 2, two times 2, 4, uh, 6 times 2, 8, uh, 7 will be 14, 8. So here we say this is what the function is a bijection. As we can see, 1 generally 2, 2, 4, and whatever input I have for X, I can generate the output. So that, we even saw in the definition that if the two set A and B, they have a one-to-one -one correspondence, N is bijection, which means I can go one to two, two to one. There's no any value left in the input or the output. Or let's say in this case, set A and B, there's no any value left with no connection and each is one connection, then we have a good one here. So we have a bijection from N to E. Since F is both from one to one and also onto, if we remember the function onto means what? They all have to have a relationship. It doesn't matter if three go to six and eight. Six, uh, Two, the down is our output, so three go to six and eight is still on two. But this time it's no more one, one to one. One to one means only one input to generate one output. Next one says so we should show that a set is countable here. So show that a set of integers Z is countable. Uh, so can list in a sequence, let's say we have 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 3, 3, negative. So, or can define a bijection from n to z if we can. But this is the sequence. Uh, here we say that if n is even number, then we may have 2 divided, n divided by 2. And if it's a hard number, then we may have negative n minus one divided by two. Uh, let's see if this is, we have n by two, if it's positive number. So we are in position two. So two by two, one, three, four, position four, Two, four by two is two, so that is correct. Five, six, position six. We are, n will be six, so six by two. Okay, so it works. 
Then we can try the odd positions. This will be three, five, seven. We plug it here. We should get the values there. Uh, what does the set n mean? The set, the, uh, in this case, our set, you mean the n, lowercase n, or upper, lowercase n is the positions. Uh, set n can be, uh, again, it can be any, uh, how will I say, any set. The name can be any name. But we know when we talk about, here we show that the set of integers z is countable. So here we are zooming, again, bijection from n to z. But the whole goal here we are trying to explain is that how can we derive this formula? If this formula, we can derive it and it works, then we can say that, again, the set is, is countable. So n can be any set. Uh, that have a bijection, bijection, bijection from n to z. But the whole thing we are looking here again. This is example script uh, from the. But the whole thing we should look here is that uh, show that a set of integers z is countable, and that's all they said. Okay, so the solution, we came up with a set. So this set, this is just to show we are not solving any problem, just to prove something. So another person or student may come up with a different set. And if he can prove it, that there's a bijection relationship, then we can say again, it's countable here. So bijection means again, if we have an input, we generate the input, the number of input we uh, generate should be the same as the number of the output and they may go both direction. So in this solution, the person decided to use, okay, uh, I came up with a set zero, one, negative one, two, negative two, three, negative three. And based on this, uh, we say that, okay, if I'm in the even position, I will use this to generate the values here. If I'm in the odd position, I may use this formula to generate. So even before coming up with this, uh, you, may, you should know how you generate it. So based on this, we use it to generate. So this is like a proving some or show something. So you have to come up with your own. Here the solution is that we list a sequence. And we are saying that this sequence may work based on these two conditions that we set here. Okay, so the next we have what we call the positive rational numbers. And positive rational numbers are always countable a positive rational number. So a rational number can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. One is divided by the other ones. But we make sure that the denominator is not equal to zero. So a good example would be three-fourths is a rational number. But square root of two is not a rational number. Again, rational number means, uh, I would say a rational number is the same as a ratio, a value denominator, uh, numerator by denominator. So now they give us a question, a proof here, show that the positive rational numbers are countable. So the solution here, we say the positive rational numbers are countable since they can be arranged in a sequence, as far as we can arrange it in a sequence. So I can start from one half, one fourth, one fourth to one eighth, and again, or anyhow you want to come up with. So here we can say R1, R2, R3, R4, etc. The next slide we show. So let's go. Uh, so here, a good example. We say the first row Q is one. The second row Q is two, etc. Three, four, etc. 
uh, we come up constructing a list. We say the first list, uh, list we have P by Q with P plus Q equal to two. Then the next list, we have the ratio P by Q again with P plus Q equal to three. So based on these two, this, this is the condition we are using to construct this. The first row Q is one. So we may have one by one. Then we have one by two because P plus Q, the first list P, P by Q with P plus Q equal to two. The second next will be P by Q with P plus Q equal to three. And that's what we generate here. So one, one, one half, one third, four, five. Then we go to two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five. Because we had the previous nest, uh, nest list, P plus Q three, first is P plus Q is two. So we are generating the values here. Wait for a few seconds if it's okay. So here I know from two five I'll go to two six two seven. Here we have one two three four five. The we can see the denominator is what is changing. One 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 two two three four five and then we keep going. And we say the terms that not cycled are not listed because they repeat repeat the previous listed terms. So when we look at four by two, and also three by three, two by four, they repeated the previous. And the next is uh, the strings. So we know what is a string again, uh, infinity set of characters or alphabets that we use. So we always can count uh, a string, always uh, should be a name. So we can count as many characters. So here they say show that a set of infinity string S over infinity alpha, alphabet A is countable, is countable infinity. Uh, we know in English, the alphabet, if we are using only alphabet, we have 26 alphabets and a string can be any set of them so here assuming alphabetical orders of symbols in a and the question here say we should show that the set of finity string s over infinity alphabet a is countable countable infinite so to show this we say that all the strings of length zero is alphabetical order. First solution show that the strings can be listed in sequence. The first list, all the strings of length zero is in alphabetical order. Why is in alphabetical? Because the, if the length is zero, there's nothing. So zero is zero means it's already in alphabetical order. Then all the string of length one is lexicographic as in a dictionary, like dictionary in order A, B, C, they have, for example, if I have a name starting with A, R, and I have a name starting with A, C, A, C will come before A, R, so it's in order. So if the length is one, the same thing, if the length is two, the same concept, and uh, we keep going on. Uh, so this will price uh, by gesture from, and again, N can be any, set to S and S is countable infinity set. We can count it, but here the whole concept is arranging it in order 
it's a lot. It's a lot. We have characters from A to Z. We can come up with any words and we can keep coming with worse and worse and worse. Even today's dictionary, they are still adding more new words in a dictionary and it should be in order. It can be countable, but it's infinity because if I have 26 characters of English alphabet, I can create any number of words I want, any number of strings. It's too many. Yeah, I mean, I can, we can talk about in millions. I can come up with over millions of uh, different words based on 26 characters. Again, that's why here yeah, the questions didn't say uncountable. We can still count it. But how can we show that the countability will be infinity? The countable is infinite, which means, and that's the steps they are showing here. We get the first a string with the length is zero. There's nothing inside. So it's in alphabetical order. That one is easy. Only one, one, that's it. There's nothing inside. Now, if you have a, only one character, oh, that's also easy because that means I have words with only one character. That means I'm going to have exactly 26 words. A, B, C, D to Z, 26, exactly. When you reach two also, uh, two is okay because maybe we have A, B. So we're trying to arrange maybe a, a, B, A, C, A, D, then we take a B, B, C, B, A, B. I mean, it's still a lot, but it's still not too much. Because you take A, uh, A, combine A with from A to Z, then combine B from A to Z, then combine. So you're getting two words, two character strings. It will be how many times? 26, 26. You have 26, you combine 26 times. Uh, still, it's a lot, but now imagine you have three characters combined, four, four. So it can be counted, but it's a lot. It, it doesn't end, it's infinity. So again, this is not a question, and this is not a mathematics question. This is just to show or prove that a string S with alphabetical, uh, English alphabetical letters, can be countable, but it's a lot, infinity. So that's what the proof is there. If I have only one, if I don't have no character for a string, this is only one. If I have one character, uh, the same. If I have two, now we are starting to get some combination that will be, then on so, so on. So we have three, four, I mean, that would be a lot. So basically an infinite set is countable if there is an apparent pattern in which the elements come in order correct yeah th yeah that's correct so because here yeah, we know that even the dictionary was uh, we can count them but it's a lot words in a dictionary i mean all the possible english words that we have in our regular dictionary it's a lot of them it's a lot of words but it's countable and actually we can generate more new words as time goes so even in our dictionary they are still generating new more words so, yeah. This section, I'm going to skip it. Everybody know programming. Yeah, they use the Java as, as an example. Or oh, let's go through this. Uh, we still have a few minutes. Show that the set of all Java programs is countable. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's countable. A set of all Java programs. So if S be the set of strings constructed from characters which can appear in Java program, Use the ordering from the previous example. Take each string in turn. If they are talking about this example, the ordering zero, one, only one, only two character, three character, four character, the possible combinations, you keep going. So it's, it's possible. Yeah, they say feed the string into a Java compiler. Of course, the Java compiler will determine if the input program is correctly synthetically correct Java program. Again, synthetically means uh, the grammar of the Java programming language is correct. Uh, if it is, then the compiler will compile it. And this will keep going, keep going. We move on to the next string. So this question is almost same as the previous one, but here pertaining to again. So for example, in Java, in programming language, here the previous one, only characters. In in any programming language, a string, as we said earlier, can be digit even. 
So I can have a 27, 27 computer Java program. If I put a double quotation on 27, then 27 becomes a string. So in Java, uh, in countable infinity is even more than a regular alphabet because in Java, in programming language, uh, characters, digits, symbols are considered as a string as far as you put them in a double quotation. So the example, the solution here is the same as the previous. We do the possible combination so we can see that again uh, to keep going. It is countable, yes, but it's a lot. Also, another example, the real numbers are uncountable. Yes, I won't go through this. Real numbers means including any negative and any positive value. So it's from negative infinity to positive. We can have a value negative trillion, negative thousand, thousand trillion. So it's uncountable. That one is where we, we, we should know that already. Also, we talk about computability. Uh, the concept of computability, again, is that sometimes we may have a problem that computer cannot solve. It's better some problems are variable that we human beings can even solve it quicker than computer. Uh, now we are doing very good uh, in AI, uh, artificial intelligence because of machine learning or Gary Dames that uh, recently we even have a deep learning or Gary Dames that are being developed. So there are some problems that machine can reason like a human being. Previously we know machine uh, computers solve problem that is yes or no, true or false, easy. You give him the input, you can give him billions of billions of input. Like for example, calculating a, uh, thousand employees salary within a second a computer can solve the problem if it's me i may sit down the whole day using calculator to solve each employee which can take again hours or if not days so those problems addition subtraction true false computers are good but we have some problem that we have to reason even with ai to move from one point to another if it's a human being i'll just go straight at 10 right 10 left i'm where i'm going but computer have to measure the distance, like uh, automated uh, driving driving cars. Human being, I get into my car, I just drive straight for. I don't need any camera. I have my eyes, everything. Um, but with automated car, we need uh, cameras to take the data, the distance. I mean, it's a lot of process. But when you get it working, everything is okay. So in this section also, they say when we read the definition here, we see that there are some problems that again can be solved by compute, computers, which is computability. And we have uncomputable, which means some problems that uh, it's not possible to solve. So we say that function is computable if there's a computer program in some programming language that find the value for this function. If the function is not computable, we say it is uncomputable. So there are uncomputable functions. We have shown that a set of Java programs is countable. And uh, this exercise 38 in our textbook shows that there are uncountable many different functions from a particular countable infinity. And again, there are so many of them. Now things are getting better, computation especially, as I said earlier, the AI and machine learning, they are solving a lot of intelligent problems that uh, we human beings, uh, 50 years ago, you cannot get a computer program to predict the stock market life as, as trade is going on. Right now we have computer programs that can predict the stock price is going down or up. Even making the decision, decisions are made by traders through computational functions now. Uh, a few years going back, uh, there was no problem that like everything must be, decisions must be, must be made by human beings. Yeah. Even cars now, we have a computer that can drive a car. 
50 years ago, 100 years ago, or when the car came out newly, uh, if you tell somebody that computer can drive a car, they will know it's impossible. But today, it's for you. you go to the medical field, now we have a computer that can read the X-ray more better. Image processing is a computer system. It can even get the accurate result of a patient X-ray image than a doctor just looking through the X-ray by light or something. Computer can do far better. And not, not only better, but quicker than a doctor that will have to take time to go through the X-ray image. And one more example about uncomputable. Let's say 20 years ago, I visit a dentist. They want to take X-ray. They take it. They don't put it in a computer. But today, you go to a dentist. The dentist will bring the dentist assistant maybe will bring a computer. They take the X-ray. The X-ray goes straight to an application computer system. So the computer can even can give the decision about the the X-ray image that they take from your uh, your mouth or wherever, wherever for the dentist. So this even make the job more faster and easier for the dentist also. So yes, still we have uncomputable problems, but we are getting there. And that will be the conclusion of two point, I think this is 2.5, yeah, 2.5. So we have one more section left. Uh, which is, let me look the test book. Yes. Oh, that's the interesting one, matrices. So who, uh, most of you have done matrix. Maybe we can make that one as a, I will just make a video on that one that we don't need to go through matrix. If most of you know what is matrix, like how to do matrix. If you take a, a finite mathematics or finite mathematics, uh, you go through like how to solve a matrix problem with a system of linear equation using determinants. Everybody did that? Uh, silence means no question there. Okay, so what will happen then is that uh, today we're going to finish the chapter two and then I'm going to post the matrix. I'll try and make the video on matrix and I'll post it if you want a review or I'll see if I can uh, and bring a material from there, then we don't need to go through that step with the matrix. Again, there will be a video. If you watch the video and you think you have a question on matrix, then next week, uh, we meet on Tuesday. So next week, Tuesday, you can bring your question. I'll try to make the matrix video. Hopefully, if not today, by Saturday, it should be done, but at least Friday or Saturday. You will see it in week five folder. Then that will take us to a new chapter in week six. So I'm going to stop the recording if no question.